Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what I decided to do today was show you a killing style trap and I've had lots of requests on my channel to show a trap that's good for game larger than squirrels and rabbits and such that is an effective type trap and I hear a lot of people talk about snares and things like that and truly speaking if you can't get the animal up off the ground with a snare it's going to be difficult to hold that animal because you're generally going to get a body catch and if you're using natural cordage or some type of rope or bank line or paracord for your snare he's going to chew out of it if it doesn't suffocate him almost immediately you've got to get him hanging up off the ground so it's difficult for him to chew out the problem inherent with that is that you don't oftentimes find a good snaring pole right where you want to put your trap where a trail exits into an open area or something like that so it makes it difficult to set snares that are actually going to be powered enough to lift the animal off the ground with that said there are traps that you can set that are killing type traps that employ a very simple machine called a windlass we've talked about the Spanish windlass in a couple videos of mine it's a very good machine to understand how it works for bushcraft woodcraft and trapping and things like that because it can be employed to make a very deadly style trap now my disclaimer to this video before I show you how to do this is that this is a killing type trap it will kill animals as large as pretty much you make the trap to kill within reason but for medium-sized raccoons possums things like that medium-sized game animals small game animals it will kill them very effectively it will also hurt you or another animal in the process if you're not careful so my disclaimer is a primitive trapping is illegal in almost every state B this is a very dangerous trap to set as well as employ so I want you to think about that before you mess with it and take this as a lesson or a tool that you can put in your toolbox for future reference if the need should arise let's get started okay so Rufus is laying on a game trail here that goes right down to the water down here and it comes from back here and it runs across higher ground which is the way animals like to travel and then it goes down to the water and crosses and goes back up to higher ground so we don't want to set a trap like this in the trail we want to set it off the trail that makes this trap optimum for use in this application right here we have two trees that are fairly close together right off the trail this is where we're going to set our trap Okay, we're gonna need a couple things that we can make ahead of time in camp before we go out to employ these traps. And realize that if I'm on a trapping campaign, I'm gonna carry other things with me to make it easier to set traps that are killing type traps. And I may carry things like nails. It's easier to carry 20 nails with me than it is 20 traps. So I oftentimes carry fence nails, 16 penny nails, and things like that to not only secure traps, but to use for trapping. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. The first thing we're going to need is a promontory peg trigger. And we can adjust the size of this depending on our trap. This is easy enough to make ahead of time and we can cut a stick plenty long and then cut it off when we get there. So we're going to use the promontory peg trigger that we talked about in the second video in this series for this trap. And it works really good for this application. I'm not real fond of this trigger for deadfalls, but I'm really fond of this trigger when it comes to this type killing trap that employs a Spanish windlass. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a killing device. And in this case, I've just got a piece of round tulip poplar, about an inch and a quarter in diameter maybe. It has a nail driven through it, a 16-penny nail out toward the end. And it has a flat, a little over one-third, but not quite half the way of the length. And then it has a flat carved on the back side here off the round. And this is where our trigger is going to go. And you'll understand more on this in just a minute. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how high we want our trap off the ground and that will depend on what type of animal we're trying to kill. This device here will also be dependent on the animal you're trying to kill as well as the type of cordage that you can utilize for this windlass. And what I've done is I've just taken two wraps of bank line around these two trees. Understanding that I want this to be wound up so that when this unwinds it drops the killing device down here. So I'm going to wind it in the opposite direction of that. And I've just pushed it all the way down to that stop cut right there where that flat is. And now I'm twisting it backwards. And as you can see, the presence of this trap is that the trigger is set here. And when the trigger is tripped, this will come around and hit the animal in the head 
or in the middle of the back behind the head something like that and that is going to kill the animal and basically pin him in place now you can see how dangerous this would be if this slips when you've got a tight line on it and your hands are in the way it's going to drive this nail right through your hand or right through your arm so it's very important that you're careful with a trap like this and that you don't over tighten it because you don't want the string to break but you don't under tighten it because you want to drive that nail into the animal as long as this is pretty sharp whether it's a nail or a sharp stick it's going to drive into that animal pretty easy as long as it's a small device a big stake is going to be much more difficult to drive into an animal than a small nail would be now that i've got this thing wound tight i'm going to hold on to it with one hand back here i don't want this thing slipping up and catch him in the arm then i'm going to put my trigger together right here on the ground beside me and hold it with my thumb and my finger and i want that point toward the front of the trap like this and then I'm going to manipulate that until I get it where I need it so that it's going to be steady and straight and it's going to be a good hold and you can see by virtue of this trigger it's pretty slippery so you're going to need to get it to where it is on level ground pretty much once you can take your hand out you still got your hand on the back of this windlass to make sure it can't catch you. Now you're pretty well set. Now it's time to block the back side of this trap so that the animal cannot approach it from the back. He can only approach it from the front. So let's see what this looks like when it goes off. I'm just going to take a stick in here. Remember, our bait is on this point right here. So we want this side of our windlass longer than this side is. That's the reason we went a little over one third of the way. So that when this gets tripped, the animal's head Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks. One thing you want to do with this trap is you want to bend this nail in a little bit, creating a hooking device. So that when this comes down and hooks into the animal, it holds him. It's not straight up and down. It's going to make it more difficult for him to pull out of it. Remember, you're going to have the back of this trap blocked off anyway. He's going to be trying to pull this direction if he's moving at all. And this is going to hold that hooking device into him and make it more painful for him to move if he's not dead immediately. I know that sounds gross and it sounds cruel, but it's a fact of life when you're trapped and you're not always going to get a clean kill right off the bat. So you want the animal to stay there until he is dead. Cut a saw kerf in the back of this windlass device just in front of your ledge here so that when you put this in the windlass to wind it up it locks inside there like that wind it a couple times till it just hangs there pretty loose and then lash it in place so that it can't pull out of there so just take and put yourself a couple of good stop type slip knots in there that ain't going to come undone like jam knots on both sides just like that and then come around the other side and half hitch that off tight just like that and just put a couple half hitches in there and then come around the other side and just knot it off it's not going to go anywhere now when that animal's hung in here and he's pulling like this he can't pull that windlass device out of there and he's hung on this stick doing this that will make this trap much more effective for you now if you didn't have a place where you had two trees close together it doesn't matter you can drive two stakes in the ground right here but you're going to want a device going between the stakes on the ground at ground level to force that compression so you're not pulling against stakes in the ground the trees are rooted they're not going to move very easy but a stake will pull in and it will make your trap less effective if you put a t-bar in there at the bottom almost like you would with a buck saw it'll prevent that from happening and this trap will be deadly effective for you all right fellas like i said i wanted to show you a killing type trap that you could set up fairly easily employing a simple machine and this type trap can be very very dangerous so be careful if you start playing with a trap like this, I would suggest that you don't put any type of nail or killing device 
in that trap when you first start playing with it. So the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get smacked on the back of the hand with a hard stick. And if you didn't have any type of a device like that that was pointed to put on a stick, you could also employ it in the same way with just that heavy stick coming down and causing blunt force trauma to the back of the head on a smaller animal and it would probably work as well. But I try to employ some type of killing device to almost kill that animal instantly when I'm using a trap like this. But for practice, you don't necessarily need it. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this video today. I thank you for your views and your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, affiliates, instructors, and friends. And Rufus and I will be back with another video as soon as we can. Thanks, guys. Come on, buddy. Let's go.